I love the entire Lintardit line, especially because they are not mainstream fragrances compared to the other designer ranges. And I love the history of Lintardit fragrances and the fact that the original Lintardit was created for the actress Audrey Hepburn, known for her elegance, grace, and eternally youthful image. So when Hubert de Givenchy in 1957 showed Audrey perfume he created for her, Audrey Hepburn said that perfume should be forbidden for anyone else to have, so there goes the name. Today, Lintadit line is recognizable by the use of heady white florals, tuberose, jasmine, and orange blossom, but every perfume in this line has its own unique quality. Which one will vibe the best with your personality? You'll find out in this video. So welcome to my channel, my nickname is Miri, and I'll quickly go through each scent profile, and then I'll compare pair these perfumes and finally I'll tell you my ratings and rankings. So let's start! The opening of the Eau de Parfum is very fruity and it's already iconic for the grape bubblegum scent it evokes on skin but just because the opening is like bubblegummy doesn't mean this is cheap overly sweet fragrance it smells luxe proper and ladylike in the heart jasmine and tuberose shine the most and in the dry down they are enveloped in the cocktail of vanilla patchouli and ambroxan so the dry down is a bit earthy and dark. Imagine grapes and white flowers growing in the dark underground secret garden. If that forbidden secret garden existed, it would smell like Lintadit Eau de Parfum. Therefore, this fragrance has an innocent, playful, floral vibe, but also it's alluring and mysterious. And if I had to describe it with one word, that word would be timeless. I can imagine Audrey Hepburn wearing it, although current perfume is a distant variation of the original Audrey wore, but it smells expensive, old money-like, it's very smooth and feminine. While the Eau de Parfum opened with fruity notes of pear and bergamot, the new version of Eau de Toilette made in 2022 opens with orange and citrusy notes so it's very sparkling it's uplifting it's youthful and in the eau de toilette i don't get any bubble gum or grape aroma that was so distinctive in the eau de parfum the main focus here is on the orange blossom instead of the jasmine and tubers you get in the eau de parfum version so the overall feel is very light it's fresh it's musky and as it dries down the scent becomes muskier and musky almost similar to a scent of the white shirts drying on a sunny day next to an orange tree blossoming. And just to let you know, I don't get leathery nuances in the dry down, but I can smell woodiness from the sandalwood and therefore the dry down is woodier and muskier compared to the patchouli dry down of the Eau de Parfum. I can envision Audrey Hepburn wearing Lintadit Eau de Toilette 2022 while wearing a white shirt. To my nose, this is the most mainstream fragrance among the others because it has a very likable clean scent profile but be aware that musk is very strong and that Eau de Toilette isn't as polished and smooth as Eau de Parfum is. It has sharper edges but it still feels very classy and if I had to describe it with one word, that word would be clean. In the intense version, I get a prominent fresh orange blossom with the spiciness of the black pepper and creaminess in the opening, but very soon tuberose shines through with the most delicious, nutty, a bit salty sesame note, which makes the whole fragrance very creamy and almost paste-like. Soon vanilla kicks in and smoothens and sweetens the fragrance out, while the patchouli and verver are like side players. They're in the background and they add dark earthiness and a bit of green freshness to this scent. The pepper doesn't allow vanilla to ever become sickly sweet and this is mostly a vanilla floral fragrance in the dry down. The intense smells like the creamiest vanilla rice sprinkled with a touch of pepper and with a few tuberous petals scattered on top. It's beautiful. 
it's bold but silky and cuddly as well it's very nuanced and seductive it has a gothic glamorous and cozy feel at the same time but i can't imagine audrey Hepburn wearing this fragrance she's famous for her girlish image and charm well if i had to describe this fragrance in one word that word would be mysterious so this would be better fitted for Sophia Loren, Greta Garbo or even Megan Fox. Lintag de Rouge has a warm velvety spicy and sparkling feel in the opening it smells like a muled spiced vine it's very different from other perfumes on the designer market because of the addition of ginger and pimental leaf and that scent of a spicy cherry or like muled vine in the opening transforms into a scent of spiced tuberose with a deep and rich flavor of sandalwood and Federer. It's sweet, it's floral, it's spicy, but in the dry down you get smokiness similar to the scent of a burning incense or a crackling fire. It's so warm, it's so seductive, it's not a fragrance for everyone. No, it, this is not for everyone. And if I had to describe it in one word, that word would be sexy. Just like with the intense version, I can't imagine Audrey Hepburn wearing this fragrance. This perfume would be better appropriate for Rita Hayworth, who exudes sex appeal in my opinion, or in Kern Hollywood for Angelina Jolie in the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith, or for Sharon Stone in the movie Basic Instinct. The opening of the Rouge Ultime is fresher and more bubblegummy compared to the spicy opening of the Rouge, but in the dry down, Ultime is very similar to the Rouge version. To put it very simply, one could say Ultime has the bubblegummy opening of the Eau de Parfum and the spicy dry down of the Rouge, but of course there are many facets to this simplified description of this perfume. And if you want to see all the similarities and differences between Rouge and Rouge Ultime, I will put somewhere here the link to that video video and I will put it in the description box as well so you can check them out later. And it's important to say that Rouge Ultima smells differently on my skin and on clothes. On my skin I can smell cacao powderiness, tubero sweetness and orange blossoms so this becomes the scent of a uh, cacao powdered tuberose while on the clothes this is a combination of fresh white florals with a lot of earthy patchouli and a green hay like vetterer and this fragrance doesn't vibe with Audrey Hepburn's <laughs> image either it would be better for Bridget Bardot because it's so likable it has brightness but also a dark alluring side so the one word I would describe Ultima with would be likable because to me this is like the most likable scent in this range. If this comparison review was descriptive, informative and enjoyable so far, don't forget to boop the like button and subscribe because that means so much. It gives me feedback and also gives me motivation to keep filming, editing and reviewing perfumes. So thank you so much for your support. But which perfume in this range will be best for you and your lifestyle? Considering wearability, the only Lintadit version wearable in any season is Lintadit Eau de Toilette because it has fresh, citrusy and clean musky accords which make Eau de Toilette versatile for any daytime activity and this is a very casual scent compared to others in this range while other perfumes in the range would be much better for fall and winter. Therefore, Eau de Parfum is a versatile fragrance which can be worn both both in day and nighttime occasions and to me Eau de Parfum is the classiest and the most elegant scent in this range appropriate for more formal occasions. The intense version is also better for fall and winter and it's mostly a nighttime perfume but I wear it to the office to work as well because it doesn't project as much as the others in this range so it could be office appropriate and wearable as a date night scent but also for formal events and 
actually in any casual situation as well. Rouge is the most seductive of them all. It's best for fall and winter for nighttime and I wouldn't wear it during the day at all. It should be reserved only for special high-end occasions and date nights. And finally, Rouge Ultima is a fall and nighttime perfume that is a bit fresher than Rouge, so it could be worn during the day as well. It's seductive, but not to the point of sex appeal Rouge exudes. Therefore, I would say this is an alluring but likable perfume wearable for different occasions, for gatherings, movies, date nights, dinners, clubbing, etc. Thus, I would say that Eau de Parfum and Rouge are the most difficult to wear in the entire line, not because they don't smell good, they smell amazing, but they have limited occasions when they are appropriate to wear. Eau de Parfum is more formal, so it's not an everyday perfume, while Rouge is very seductive and therefore limited to date nights. So which one will be for you? Considering the no structure you must like white florals to like any of these perfumes but I would say that Eau de Parfum Intense and Rouge are the smoothest they are beautifully blended and they have no sharp edges while Eau de Toilette and Rouge Ultimate yeah, they are a bit harsh, sharp, and not so smooth. So just have that in mind if how perfume is blended plays a huge role in deciding which perfume you will purchase. If you love sweet, bubblegummy, jasmine and tuberose with patchouli and elegant perfumes, the Eau de Parfum will be the best choice for you. But if you prefer orange blossom, fresher, lighter, and musky notes in perfumes that give a clean vibe, then try out the new Eau de Toilette version. On the other side, if you prefer creamier, denser, and deeper tuberose scent with a vanillic dry down, which is very cozy and comforting but mysterious and intoxicating as well, then go for the intense version. Rouge will be the one for you if you love spicy perfumes that have a literal crackling fire feel and smokiness in the dry down. So if you like smoky tuberose and creamy sandalwood dry downs, go for the Rouge. And finally, you will love Rouge Ultima if you enjoy a floral bubblegummy aspects of the Eau de Parfum and the spiciness of the Rouge. So if you like very sweet tuberose and spicy patchouli dry down, try out Rouge Ultima. So what kind of woman would wear these fragrances? This is just the image that pops up in my mind while smelling these perfumes. And let me know in the comments, do you agree with these images or does any of these perfumes smell different to you or evoke a different type of image while you're wearing them? Eau de Parfum would be worn by a classy woman born into wealth, who loves wearing clothes in the old money-like style, who loves going to formal events, events such as art gallery shows or museum exhibitions. So this is a very upscale, it's ladylike and it's an elegant perfume. On the other hand, Eau de Toilette would be the scent of a woman enjoying minimalistic style. She wears a lot of white shirts, she loves clean and simple aesthetics. So this is the most casual and the girliest scent in this range, in my opinion. Intense would be the scent of a woman in a black suit, a type of bold confident boss a lady who is actually very soft on the inside or the scent of a warrior queen whose one glance is enough to defeat any enemy but who cries at the scene of sufferings of her people so this has a gothic dark sensual seductive side but it's also quite soft it's cozy and comforting Rouge is the most seductive, sweet, spicy perfume I've tried. It's not girly, nor is it ladylike or bossy. It's a pure form of seduction, but an upscale type of seduction. This is a scent of a hot vampire or the scent of a woman in a red dress at an opera with a mysterious smile who turns gazes of gentlemen as she walks by. Rouge Ultime is a mix of different perfumes 
perfumes in this range. It has fresh, elegant florals of the Eau de Parfum and spicy rouge seductiveness. So this would be the scent of a woman who knows how to be elegant, fun and seductive. It's the scent of a grown-up, elegant woman loosing up and dancing the night away in a club. And all the perfumes in this range have amazing performance. They all last quite a long time, but the longest lasting are Rouge and Intense. They last for days on clothes. Eau de Parfum and Rouge Ultima have pretty great lasting power as well, while the Eau de Toilette lasts just a tad bit less, but it also has amazing longevity for Eau de Toilette concentration. It lasts about six hours on my skin, which is great. Considering the projection on my skin, Rouge Ultime and Eau de Parfum have a great projection for the first two hours. They are very loud, but then they slowly fade away, while Eau de Toilette and Rouge project moderately up to arm's length for the entire wear of them. And the Intense is the most restrained of them all, it sits a bit closer to the skin, which is why it reflects its mysterious side. As I've already stated, I love all the perfumes in this range, so you will notice that my ratings are pretty high for each perfume, and you can find something for yourself in this range because all perfumes are very different and you can have them all, but the only perfume that would be a bit redundant if you already have Eau de Parfum and Rouge is Rouge Ultima. And now I will share with you my ratings and rankings of these perfumes, but keep in mind that these rankings are a combination of ratings of the scent profile and performance of each perfume, so my personal ranking may not follow the ratings because I've ranked them by scent profile preferences. I've put L'Intardit Rouge Ultime on the fifth place with 7.5 out of 10. Fourth place goes to L'Intardit Eau de Parfum, it got 8 out of 10. The third place goes to Eau de Toilette and it got 8.5 out of 10. And the big second place goes to L'Intardit Rouge, it got 8 out of 10, and my first place goes to Lintadit Intense, I would give it 9 out of 10. And as you can notice, the fragrances with patchouli dominant dry downs aren't my thing, and therefore the Eau de Parfum and Rouge Ultime are placed on the lower part of the scale. I prefer the muskier dry down of the Eau de Toilette, sandalwood dry down of the Rouge, and vanillic dry down of the Intense. But if you love patchouli, your ranking might be completely opposite of mine. So let me know in the comments what are your experiences with these perfumes in the Lean target range, which one is your favorite and why. Also, I've linked full in-depth reviews of each of these fragrances in the description box so you can check them out later. If you want to see my comparison of another popular designer range, Lancome's La Nuit Trésor, then click on this video and don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Thank you so much and see you there. Bye!